Blended Podcasts. Brought to you by Blended Audio. Hello and welcome to Centre Stage, the South African theatre and film podcast. We are hosted on the Blended Podcast Network. So please do us a solid and follow Blended Podcast on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and now even iTunes. Basically anywhere where good podcasts are found. Basically. (laughs) It really helps us, our show, and all the other amazing shows on the network. I'm your host, Alistair King and Daniels. With me as ever, Peter Bates. Yes. And what are we talking about today, Peter? We're talking about bad movies. Those stinky, (laughs) awful, giant, steaming piles of bad, 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 bad movies. I feel like... Naughty movie. Don't do that again. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we've got a lot to say. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We definitely have a lot to say. Okay. So I, I I like to start things off. We just categorize things a bit. Okay. So there's movies that are dumb on purpose. Okay. Yes. Like Napoleon Dynamite, for example. Oh my <laughs> Oh, that's the worst God. thing in the world. Okay. There's movies that are dumb on purpose, like Napoleon Dynamite, and uh, stuff like Anchorman. With oh, um, yeah. what's his name? Will, Fer- Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell? Oh, yeah. Will Ferrell. Uh, Anchorman, which is just like just on purpose stupid, and which are to me those are bad movies. Um, then you've got other movies which are like purposefully trashy like Sharknado have you seen Sharknado <laughs> I love Sharknado what yes. are you out of your mind I watched all five no I yep. what, really yes no you I can't believe it's you. all on Netflix I literally watched the first one for about 20 minutes and then I was like I am done no, I am you, actually done because you know it's a stupid idea I mean sharks in a tornado and then yeah. you just can't stop watching because okay. you know the people don't take it seriously like an, like Anaconda. No, but Anaconda was one that actually tried to be... Okay, so the third category is movies that tried to be good, but actually turned out to be complete horse rubbish. Horse cock. <laughs> like and d- The Room. D- <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I wouldn't... Man. I wouldn't Which even... is basically a meme at this point. Yes. Oh, hi, Mark. I wouldn't even... <laughs> <laughs> you just threw me right I'm there. sorry um, oh hi Mark um, what was I saying no I was saying I wouldn't even put The Room in that sort of category oh really I would put like because The Room has such a cult following oh okay well that, you get those movies thing. that are terrible who try to be good but no one at all likes them so there's movies that are t- try to be good and actually suck and then there's movies that try to be good actually suck but people still watch them anyway do you think The Room is one of those? yes okay I, th- I think you're almost right almost like, tra- like a train crash yeah 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 what like a train crash it's like you don't want to look but it's interesting so you keep looking even you though it's looking. actually disgusting that's yeah, The Room exactly yeah exactly right okay yeah I think you're right um, yeah, so I think those are like the three main categories of movies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that, yeah. so what actually? So, what makes a movie bad? Like, why? You know, should we now, do a case study? <laughs> <laughs> so, we, what film do you want to take? Um, we could take the room. Oh God, the room. Okay, let's just look at the the dialogue. Okay. The the writing of the 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 thing. Okay. <laughs> it's just like clunky. Mm. And how how would you describe? But that's another thing. How do you describe bad, bad Started writing? Clunky, unnatural. But like, what would you what would you say is clunky? What do you mean? What would you say is clunky? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It's like this. It's like it's it's just like no human being would actually say those words in that sequence with that intonation. Like, there's no way that that would be done. But is that not is that not the the actor? The okay, acting? it's totally okay. But we're talking about the acting because I haven't. I've just watched the thing. Um, totally discordant so we've got like something happens and then the actor responds in like a completely like wrong tone of voice like the typical the meme the meme worthy oh hi mark <laughs> exactly right so that's that's just sucks okay and then you've got i think movies that are like thematically bad so like for example okay but sharknade is an interesting point because like i think it set out it tried to be crap yeah it was like it wasn't taking itself yeah, it's seriously. Like, I'm a bad movie. I don't care what you think about me. I'm just doing whatever I want. Okay? I mean, the main guy, one of the one of the main characters, has like a chainsaw attached to his arm. Like, <laughs> like you, 
you you as a viewer you don't yes. go okay this is going to be good good le- good got, cinema yeah you go, and then you've I'm got other stuff trash. which is just cheesy and which means that it's bad like from an artistic standpoint have you seen danger five no. it's an australian sh- uh, series mini series it's it's basically oh my word it's basically like it's like a pastiche of like james bond and like all the 60s B movies and like it's just a complete mess up and it's like stereotypical and it's racist and it's sexist and it's everything and it's disgusting but at the same time it's really engaging and really funny because the production values are actually really high <laughs> so like for example there's a character his name is Colonel Chessbridge and he's like the like the typical like patriot mm. he's literally an American eagle in a suit <laughs> and it, it's like it's it's like not even a realistic it's like it looks like a wooden plastic feather puppet <laughs> And he like talks. I would and cringe so much. It's cringe, but it's also so good because they 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 put a lot of effort into making it look like they didn't put any effort in, and so therefore <laughs> it's really good. And like the storyline is like completely arbitrary. Like this one scene, she picks up the phone, and then she the, the woman like shoots a gun through the phone, and the person on the other end of the phone <laughs> dies. <laughs> like it's like like what are you even doing? Like that's ridiculous. But it's good. But yeah. Yeah, because there's like a sort of there's a sort of um, creativity like, in that. Yes, it's like it's like a high budget production, but it looks like it's got no budget. But not even that. Like, who would think of like shooting into a phone and then having the bullet actually come out the other head? Like, yeah, yeah that's a creative idea. Yeah. Like, it's creative, but it's just so bad. It's like if you've ever been in a movie where like you watch the movie and you you see a new scene and you're like, hang on, weren't we? Isn't that the same set? Yes. It's like the same it's set like just with just different somewhere. dressing, like different tables and different uh, um, flowers and plants and stuff in the background. Yeah, exactly that kind of thing. So it's it's kind of like doing a lot with a little and making it look bad, but actually being good. Okay. Mm. Fantastic. And then um, you get movies like, have you, did you, in your, in your research, my, did you find... <laughs> <laughs> characterizing it as research is a bit much. <laughs> did you find Battlefield Earth? <laughs> I did uh, not know this movie existed. I watched um, the trailer. I cringed like you could never believe. I I didn't even finish the trailer. I just it was so bad. It's got John Travolta, and what bothered me is got it's got it had Forrest Whitaker as well. Yes, so like a, a great good actor, actors, great actors, and then it's just trash. And then it's just it's just a whole bunch of nope. Mm. And like, but that that is a movie like I was saying earlier, which. Um, people try to make it good. Yes. And then it turned it out being terrible. Yeah, so a movie that so it's it's a movie that they actually tried to make a good movie. Like they were serious like about it. Like they were serious and the actors are like acting and everyone is like doing their job and everything is going really, really well. And then it gets released and it is just a piece of poo basically. I think it had it had three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. What three. is it what is I'm actually fu- I'm actually curious now, what is like the lowest the lowest scoring movie on like Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes or something? Like I would like to watch that movie. It's Battlefield Earth. Oh, re- oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, no, I thought Battlefield Earth was a complete I, you know, I, I'm not one to actually watch a movie and then say, no, I don't want to watch this anymore. I'm not one to give up halfway in a movie. Um I did. <laughs> Sharknado <gasps> and Battlefield Earth. What's that movie that we both gave up on? Remember tree of Life. School? Yes, Tree of Life. Oh, Tree of Life had its head so far up its own head. See, that's a whole that, nother, that's a whole nother category, actually. Yeah, that, but, but I think that was trying to be art. That was like this avant-garde, <laughs> like... It was trying to be art. It was trying to be art. I, I think maybe it was art. So I don't know if maybe we didn't get it or maybe it just stank. I don't actually know. I think, I, I personally suspect that my opinion about that movie was correct. And the movie was just terrible bad. <laughs> yeah but yeah i think we, we got about 20 minutes in and then we stopped and then we, just, we were just like what I is actually that. happening yeah. no i think that sucked for a different reason i think that's because i think that's kind of like trying too hard yeah and then failing so it's not like it's like it's which is different to other movies like battlefield earth which tried and failed and yeah. was just bad whereas i think tree of life tried too hard and still fell flat on its face so it's interesting to see how, like, even when you're talking about bad movies, there's such a there's such a spectrum of how a movie can be bad, mm. you know. Um, and we're talking about we're talking about cult classics and like, what is that saying? So bad, it's good. So bad. So it's, it's good. so bad, it comes all the way back around again and actually becomes quite quite acceptable. But like, how how does that happen? I mean, think about um, what's that one that we also used to love, Kung Pao. 
Oh, but, so bad. But Kung Pao is a technical achievement. Kung Pao. <laughs> you see, you're describing it as a technical achievement. But it is. I mean, the, the amount of work that went into recreating that movie. So basically, uh, listeners, for those of you who haven't <laughs> experienced, for those of you who haven't experienced what the <laughs> thea- theatrical masterpiece that Kung Pao is. Um, and you know what's sad is that I'm Googling it right now. And it actually, the only I write, I type the word Kung, and the next thing it suggests is Foo Panda. And I'm like, Google, you know nothing about good movies. <laughs> um, so it's called Kung Pao Into the Fist. It's a 2002 movie. Um, and basically what he did, um, what's his name? Steve Odekirk or something. Anyway, so he got the rights to this old um, Hong Kong karate movie uh, <laughs> called Savage Killers. And basically what he did is he blended portions of the film with of the, the, that film with portions that he performed in that on he green refilmed in yeah. green screen so he inserted himself into shots he recut things he changed things and oh my word it's just he but the, redubbed old stuff so there's, there's so <laughs> much technical effort that went into it I think it cost him like 10 million dollars or something and then he got 17 million back it actually made a profit mm. um, and there's so much technical effort that went into it that it's just it's really a funny movie but the thing is Yes, he put a lot of effort into it, but still, if you take the movie yeah. and you just watch it and you don't know any of that, oh, it's bad. It's terrible. It's bad. It's, I mean, it's got a flying. It's ridiculous. It's got a flying pyramid. It's um, got sorry, a, a French space dog or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's yeah. complete. It's complete nonsense. It's got a lady with one boob. It's who's like a ninja fighter. It's like. Yeah, but, like what? <laughs> but but that, but that's the, but that's you see that's the humor. So like it's it's funny because it's so obvious. He fights a cow. But it looks like it looks like a real movie. That's the thing. Cow. It, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like Uncanny Valley for movies. Yeah, it's like so close to being a real movie, but it's actually not because it does things slightly wrong, and then it just looks bad and repulsive. But it's also engaging in a certain way. But it, it's yeah. Yeah, I reckon I reckon that you should all that you guys who are listening to this should all watch the movie. But the, I mean that also goes as to what we're saying. It's like it's it's a cult hit. Yes, but like, yeah, it's a cult favorite. Yeah, of course. But how does how does it become like a cult hit? Like what I didn't know. Can I be honest? Can I be real? Yeah. When I watched first, Little Alistair, mm-hmm. I didn't know that all this had happened. I didn't know it took him so much money to to make it. Um, I didn't know that it was in fact not him in the original movie. Oh, you thought it, it was, was a genuine movie. It was it was like an it looked like an old movie. So the the bad part, like the bad CGI and everything, looked like like of the time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So when I watched it, I was like, "This is a terrible movie, but I love it." Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at Rotten Tomatoes. Apparently, says it has a 13. A 13% average rating of 2.9 out of 10. Metacritic gives it an average score of 14 out of 100, indicating overwhelming dislike. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, it is... But, but, of- okay, look, look, let's be frank. It is a bad movie. Yes. As well. Like, it's, it's, it's just bad. Like, it's stupid and it's inane and banal and mundane and all of those things. Um, but it's so bad, it's good. <laughs> but it's so bad that it's good and it has a cult following, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I think it's it's got a lot to do with the thing is that it's obscure, okay? It's it's obscure. It's transgressive. It like crosses the boundaries, and I think people are naturally drawn to things that kind of like break the mold and that are weird and that are, you know, that that kind of buck the trend. I think people are drawn to that kind of thing, um, and. It's kind of like it's it's kind of like also the debate between like what is art and what is not art, right? <laughs> so like why, like for example, there's this beautiful thing. It's it's you take paint, you take acrylic paint, and you pour it on a surface, and it produces these incredible like wavy patterns and cellular structures and stuff. And people are like people rave and they say, oh, it's beautiful art, it's beautiful art. Well, it's not really art because you're just kind of splashing. And it's not like Jackson Pollock splashing yeah. paint onto a canvas. Like that was artistic. It's kind of just like letting the natural process of paint mixing on a surface produce a pleasingly aesthetic image. Yeah, through um, no skill of your own. Exactly. So people, you know, and then there's, there's, there's people who try and like submit that to like art galleries and stuff. And the galleries are like, well, actually, it's amateurishly executed and there's no clear vision. Mm. So therefore, it's not art. Um, and I think it kind of it kind of cult, cult films as well 
um, kind of get very, very close to that line of like amateur execution and no clear vision. Um, like for example, Kung Pao, I wouldn't say it has a clear vision. I mean, there's, some, there's definitely something they set out to do, but yeah. whether they achieve no, like, that, whether that's clear or not, I don't know. Um, stuff like um, uh, stuff like Day of the not Day of the Tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, Elsa. What's that? The movie uh, Battlefield Earth. Okay, yeah. like that's got a clear like you could see what they were trying to do, yeah. and it's it's bad because they didn't achieve it in such a t- spectacular way. way, in <laughs> such a monumental way. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I don't know, and the fact is, like, some of the stuff is just pure camp. Which is yeah. also really funny. Like Danger Five is pure camp, but that's what makes it really entertaining, you know. So I think it's it's like a combination of factors that make things entertaining. And also, I think people get, you know, and I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast: is people get burnt out. Like if you look at, like you look at art, and mm. then you like engage with it, and you get to know what it's like and what it's about. And sometimes you just get burnt out on that, and you're like, you know what? I want something that's completely weird, random, and, and out of the ordinary. And then you're like, wow, this is actually enjoyable, and that's where it comes from. Yeah, you're um, like you're watching a bunch of revenants the whole time, and then you're like, actually. I just want a Kung Pao. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like, um, like I don't really identify. I don't think I identify that with that with, with that much because I believe that movie watching should be a fun experience. And, and you know, this some, is the thing. Like, people are like, oh, no, I don't. I get you get people. You meet people, and they're like, you talk about books and stuff, and you're like, yeah, no, I don't really read because I try to read this book, and it's like insert giant book title here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm an avid reader. I read a lot, mm. and I wouldn't even dream. I wouldn't want to tackle a book like that just because that book is like just dense and difficult and like terrible. Oh, it's like, why are you not watching movies that you enjoy watching? Yeah, you know, like don't feel pressured to go and watch movies that are like good movies like gold standard of movies watch movies that are trash have fun with it you know it's mm. it's a fun thing to do it's um, entertainment not course. to talk down to people who are are, are like oh, oh deep movies we've got to watch this kind of thematically dense stuff but yeah just like chill and relax and enjoy and if it's bad watch it anyway <laughs> and see what happens you know and turn it off in 20 minutes it might become like a it. cult classic <laughs> it might become a cult classic that's the thing so yeah so what makes a cult film it breaks it breaks a taboo it transgresses on the norm. It makes it uh, it upsets the apple cart. Um, but I feel like you're giving it too much like prestige. Almost like it breaks taboo. Well, it but, but, but upsets the apple cart. Like, so what would you, is that too much? Yeah. Well, whether they do it purposefully or not, they've still created <laughs> something of note, right? That's true. So I mean, even if you've accidentally created something noteworthy, it's still noteworthy, right? Look at Quentin Tarantino's movie making style. Okay. Um, though, like Django, let's look at Django. Mm. That it's very widely regarded as a good movie, but it adopts so many things that are cult classic, like the yeah, staples like of cult classic, um, like so blood and gore over the top, and like extremes of um, you know, like yeah, violence and sexuality, mm. and like the complete extremes, and like things that look ridiculous. Um, but it kind of toes the line between. Um, between cult films and mainstream films. Yeah. It's like... I suppose, it's like what you were saying, the uncanny valley of film. Like, there's this line which if you cross, then your your film becomes like a... It goes into cult, cult territory, and then if it goes too far, then it goes down into just battlefield... Earth. Battlefield Earth territory, yes. Territory. And then it kind of like comes out of that and comes to the other end. And then in a way almost rejoins the mainstream and kind of like kind of, kind of fringes up against the mainstream. You know, in like like a, my example of Quentin Tarantino stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what's really interesting is this, um, this phrase I've come across. Um, films are frequently stated to be a, quote, instant cult classic. So every film wants to be a cult classic. Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying um, that I've seen films that are bold before they've released as instant, as a cult classic. instant cult classics. Like, what? You can't you you can't set out to make a cult classic. No, it just can becomes you? one. Can you? Can you by imitate? Look, cult classics come because people who are inept are imitating what they see, aping great forms of art, right? Yeah. So what, what would be like the cult classic of cult classics? You see what I'm saying? So somebody who sets out to ape what a cult film looks like and then doing so accidentally creates a real film. That would be a great premise for a film, <laughs> actually, <laughs> by the way. So you guys can take that and run with that. That's actually a great premise. Um, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, you can't... Like, a cult film is... 
like becomes a cult film by the people who watch it. Like yes. you can't you can't say that this is going to be a bad movie that people will love. Yeah. From you can't make a movie with that aim. You just you, you got to make a movie with the aim of yes, you want people to watch it. Hopefully they'll like it. Mm. Mm. Whether it's a good whether you're trying to make a good movie or you're trying to make a bad movie. But you can't like say, "Oh, this is going to be a cult." Cult, yeah, we can't. You can't set out to create it. Like, look at uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, yeah. when that's shown Which in is cinemas, a very weird show. It is. It's a weird movie, and you know, it borrows a lot. And but again, it's also good. Yeah. Okay. But it's got it's got a cult following. So you know, people dress up when they go watch yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, there's that you know, throw toast at the screen, and there's all that mm. kind of stuff. So it's got like those rituals behind it, and I think that's that's what makes something a cult classic. And some cult classics are really, really good films, like actually yeah. in and of themselves, really good films. Um, and some of them are also just completely trashy. Um, so could we say that a cult classic is any film that has um, some form of following or of of something outside of its own so like um the room has a lot of memes like oh hi yes Mark. like it's got a lot of memes um kung pao has all those lines like bad and wrong it's bad and wrong yeah yeah <laughs> so wrong. so maybe there is maybe there's a certain meme quality to fo- to to yeah. bad movies as well if it's memeable it's kind of like it... how ridiculous was it that they said that and then you kind of explore that and use that in everyday and that sort of goes into like the culture um of society, of like the people who watch it mm. and then they start talking about that and then they go oh I actually like this part of this movie oh that part was actually quite cool and then with like Rocky mm. Horror Picture Show they start oh let's we'll go watch it and we'll yeah. dress up as it you it's know like a celebration of non-conformity that's interesting do you see that yeah okay it's a celebration of non-conformity although then again if you're looking at like the ritualization with like, like Rocky Horror Picture Show they start oh, so it's funny because it breaks the rules it's enjoyable because it breaks the rules yeah. right so a bad film can be a good film because of the amusing way in which it breaks <laughs> in which it like smashes your expectations and completely breaks the rules and that's where it picks up its meme quality. That's where the room, I think, really shines because it's just, it just like smashes, like it's irreverent. It just doesn't care. It, it doesn't seems care. not to care about like the, the established rules of how films are supposed to work. And like even basic stuff, like just like the, the, the way that, um, um, just dialogue should be tonally coherent. Like it just <laughs> completely ignores any of that. And that's actually why it's, enjoyable and that's why it's funny and that's why it's meme worthy and i think that's actually what makes a bad film good is because it 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 triggers that like that sense of the weird or the strange or the Mm. unknown and i think that's what makes a bad film good so i think we'll stop there we're gonna wrap it up there right that idea (laughs) fantastic okay so i'm gonna go off and i'm gonna go watch some bad films this weekend that sounds a great (laughs) plan i think i'm gonna actually rewatch the room oh man i love it okay cool are we done Yes. Thank you, Alistair. And thank you, listeners, for joining us on another episode of Center Stage, the South African Film and Theatre Podcast. We hope to see you again next week. Till then. King Media Productions Center Stage is a South African film and theatre podcast hosted by Alistair King and Daniels and Peter Bates and produced with the generous assistance of Blended Podcasts brought to you by Blended Audio. Blended Audio.